Ugh. One of my friends is really winding me up. We went for a walk last week and she just seemed to spend the whole time pressing my buttons, saying all the things that really annoy me and just trying to wind me up. Oh, it makes me mad just thinking about it now. I'm so irritated. I think of all the things I could have said to get back. Hi, I'm Hannah and this is Ice's Thought for the Week video. Today, we're going to be discussing forgiveness, but I want to tell you about a lady called Corrie. Now, Corrie hid Jews during the Second World War from the Nazis in a secret compartment in her room. Imagine that being one of those people stuck in a bit of a room in a secret compartment. I thought self-isolating in my whole house and garden only for 10 days was bad enough. Anyway, back to Corrie. She and her dad and her sister hid hundreds and hundreds of Jews until they were arrested and captured and sent to concentration camp. That would be the last time that Corrie would see her dad as he went off to the men's camp. She and her sister Betsy were able to stay together and they endured the horrors of concentration camp together until Betsy died. Shortly before the end of the Second World War, Corrie was released from concentration camp on what seems to be an administrative error. And what did she do with those last years of her life? She went around the whole world talking about what she'd learned about God and God's forgiveness in concentration camp. She even went back to Germany to tell them. One night she was speaking in Munich and at the end of her session, someone came up to her beaming and like buzzing, massive smile on his face. Oh, that's so amazing that Jesus died for me and that he forgives all the things that I've done. Thank you so much, Corrie. Stuck out his hand for her to shake it. In that moment, Corrie recognized who he was. He was one of the guards of the, um, in the shower block of the concentration camp that she and her sister endured. And the resentment and the anger built up in her as he was stood there in front of her. And then she prayed for God's help and then managed to hold out her hand and shake his and release that um, tension that had just suddenly brought, um, built up in her. She was able to forgive the man that had been instrumental in the horrific things that she had encountered in concentration camp. Whoa, that is amazing. Someone once said that not forgiving is like drinking poison and then expecting the other person to die. When we don't forgive, it eats away at us and it niggles us and it plays on our mind all the time and we feel tense and annoyed and frustrated and angry and betrayed. But actually, the other person often just goes through life not knowing or not caring about the, um, the hurt that we're feeling. Back to my friend. I'm wound up and frustrated and annoyed. She's got no idea. I know what I need to do. I need to let go. I need to forgive her. I need to go to her and try and rebuild our friendship. When Jesus talked about the Ten Commandments, he didn't just say, do not murder. He said, being angry with someone is like murder. Wow, that is pretty strong stuff. And then he also talks about um, when you have a disagreement with someone or you've fallen out with someone or you're angry with someone, go sort it out as quickly as possible. That is a big challenge, but it's a big challenge that we can do when we recognize that God has forgiven us. Remember that line in the um, Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Wow, that's a good reason to forgive. How about you? Is there anyone that you need to forgive today?